Rico. This is the Game Controller Project at Neurotechnology Exploration. So what we have here is the OpenVCI board. So the way all this wiring works is we have two sensors here. This one detects muscle, this one detects average skin. And the difference between this is how much the muscle is flexing. And then on this arm we have the exact same thing, where this is the main muscle sensor, this is the reference, so that when you flex it sees, oh, this is bigger than this, so there must be a muscle. But then on the other side, we have this one, which filters out heartbeat. So if we look at the board, we have pens that are labeled, um, it's upside down, N1P, N2P, all the way up to N8P. So a big problem that we made, a big mistake that we had, was we were using the SRB pins for reference, and that does work with EEG, but not EMG. So what you want to do is you want to take the main muscle, put that at the bottom of N1P, then put the reference at the top of N1P, and then the same goes for the other muscle with N2P and so on. You can put it on your leg anywhere you want, but then the reference for heartbeat is not SRB, it is bias, the bottom bias pin, not the top. Then, mouse, we have, this is the OpenVCI GUI. You go to hardware settings. For this particular project, you want to turn on include for these biases, because you want the bias to be included, you're using the pin. Then you want SRB1 and 2 to be off for all of them. And you want to turn off any of these extra channels. If you want to use a hotkey, you press the button on the keyboard. So now, if I completely relax my muscles, you can zoom in, you can see that they are flat. Then when I flex one arm, it shows up and it doesn't affect the other one. Then I can do my other arm, and there it is. So the way this gets converted to input is you go down to the EMG, you select COM18 for output, which in this case is the one we want, then baud rate is 9600. What that does is the NES controller. That sends the controller data that we want out of this USB, then that goes into this NES controller, which is actually connected to an Arduino, then that has a USB splitter built in, where it goes in, gets the actual X input protocol buttons, like an actual Xbox 360 controller, then that comes back out and through the wire. So if you wanted to, you could make this work on an Xbox. You unplug this here, plug that into the computer, then plug this one into the Xbox, and then you have it working on an Xbox. But in this case, it's a computer, so it's all plugged into one. So, with all that working, we can try playing Mario. We haven't gotten to the end of 1-1, but we have gotten close. And I'm just waiting for everything to relax out. It's done. So now, Mario. Here we go. Left arm is to move, right arm is to jump. You can see there aren't any false positives. All right. Also with save states, we can have infinite lives. That's built into the emulator. Also, the actions that the uh, that these muscles are triggered to can be remapped to anything without having to change the program. So if we wanted it to be keyboard input, we could do that without changing the code. If we wanted it to be different buttons on a controller, we could do that. Every game that we want to test has input manager, so we can just change it to whatever action we want. But in this case, it is left arm is move and right arm is jump. We could change that to be the other way around if we wanted to, and we wouldn't have to change any code. Which also means if a user wants to use it, dang it, if a user wants to buy this and use it, they wouldn't have to do any programming to change which arm does what. I swear we got close to the end of the level earlier. But um, this does work, it does take practice, but there are no false positives, there are no false negatives, it's just a matter of practice.